Namaste, everybody. Hari Bol. Here we are. And today on our Happy Man show, we're going to show you what gear we take in the mountains, what gear we personally use. I've been doing this for many years, and so I've kind of selected different items that I find work the best. For any person who's a regular mountain traveler, this will a lot of times see, seem elementary or rudimentary, like everybody knows that. And that's what I used to think until I found out that so many people have no idea how to dress in the mountains, what equipment they need. And so, you know, I've, I'm making this video to kind of give you a heads up because our videos seemingly are always in the mountains and it may encourage somebody to go into the mountains. And I don't want to be responsible for you going there and getting in trouble or being totally miserable or uncomfortable and hating the mountains or whatever, just because you don't know how to dress or what shoes to wear or what to take with you to be a little safe, etc. Okay, so this is probably going to be a two or three part series because it's a lot involved and so we'll start with the basics, the clothes. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to start with base layers. These are the clothes you wear next to your skin. And I will inform you that the best material that I have found is merino wool. It's light, it's warm when it's cold, it actually is cooling when it's warm, and it's very light, very comfortable to wear. So it's, uh, it's good in all areas. Even if it gets wet, it will still keep you warm. Another big plus. So I start always with a t-shirt. This is merino wool t-shirt. Looks like any other t-shirt, but the material is merino wool. There's a few companies making that now. Icebreaker is one well-known company. Another is Smart Wool. This happens to be a Helly Hansen t-shirt. But these companies, they make good stuff that fits and very comfortable to wear. So I start with a merino wool t-shirt base layer. And on the bottom, if it's warm, I wear merino wool boxer shorts. If it's a cooler day, and cooler meaning from plus one, plus two degrees Celsius, and down to wherever it goes, I wear merino wool long johns. This happens to be from Smart Wool. And if it's a very cold day, I'll wear these over top of my merino wool boxers. If it's not so cold, then I don't. Hmm? And so that will keep my legs warm. And then, of course, on the feet, that's part of the body, right? I have wool, merino wool socks. And there's a few different thicknesses. You can get light ones for warmer days. You can get medium weight for those, you know, zero and minus four and five days. If it gets really cold, you can get thicker ones. But choose your socks carefully so they fit properly in your shoes. We'll get to the shoes later on. Okay, so that's my base layer on the bottom next to the skin. Then, I have a long sleeve shirt. I prefer a zip neck shirt because it, it's very easy to adjust the temperature. And this one is merino wool and a, a little bit of synthetic in it. It's by Devold from Norway. I have a, another shirt here I'll show you in a moment. And this is also taking the moisture away. It's called wicking, when they, it takes the moisture from your skin because you don't want to get wet. That's the worst thing that can happen out there if you get wet. See, so you need clothes that draws the moisture from your skin and then it will pass it on to the outer layers 
and evaporate off and you will stay relatively dry or completely dry. And this one has a little loop here on the end of the arms, like at this shirt I have on now. So it goes, your thumb goes through here and this keeps this part of your hand warm. It keeps your sleeves from going up if you happen to extend your arm. And this greatly adds to the warmth of your hands because it keeps the back of your hand where the blood is flowing more warm. So the warmer blood goes into your hand and keeps your hands warm. So that is one of my base layers. This is medium weight, I would say. The one I am wearing right now, this is a synthetic. It's made by Polar Tech. And this is also very good. It's wicking, drying, and it is also lightweight and very warm for the weight. If it's a very cold day, I have this. This happens to be from the company Patagonia. And this is a synthetic also. It's called Power Stretch. And it is very, very warm. It's like having on a little jacket. Again, zip neck. It even has a, a, a chest pocket, which, you know, it's not that important. And it has as well the loops for your thumbs to keep your hand warmer and keep the sleeves from riding up. So if it's really a cold day, I'll wear this and this or this and this, depending on the temperature. I like to layer up so the day doesn't stay, stay the same temperature from the beginning to the end. It might start really cold, you know, but, you know, two or three, four hours later, it's a lot warmer. So you've got layers. You can take off a layer when you need it. Clouds come in, the wind starts blowing, it gets cold again, put some layers back on. So you can adjust. Having one big thick coat is the worst thing you can do. Never do that. That's what some people do. They think, oh, it's cold. I got to have a big jacket. No, you want the lightest, thinnest garments or layers that you can have and just adjust as you go. So that's there on the legs. I found these pants to be amazing. They're from a company in Sweden called Lundhag. But there's many companies that make very good pants. These are very fast drying. They're not waterproof. Very fast drying. Very comfortable. They have zipper vents in the thighs, like these I'm wearing now. You may not be able to see that. But, you know, and also these vent at the side of the leg, on the lower leg, the calf. So on warmer days, you can get some more air flowing. Or as I say, when things warm up, open your vents, cool down, be comfortable. Gets cold, close the door and sip them back up. You know, and they've got a nice pocket arrangement. They got, you know, some pockets in the legs and here and these, these upper pockets on these particular pants. This is a mesh green here that also acts as a venting. So the air can come up and come out here. Regulating that temperature is very, very important, very nice. So these are the ones I use a lot. But like I said, you don't have to buy this brand. There's other brands. Make sure you get a material that is going to dry fast because sometimes you get wet, either in grass or a, a sudden little rain comes and you get stuck. These also have adjustments around the ankle so you can pull them tighter around your shoes. Many, many features here that are very useful, not just, you know, for looks. Okay, so let's all move over here to some other layers to keep us warmer. All right, this is a vest and I'm always carrying my vest. I either have it on my body or in my backpack. This one is made, uh, of course, in the outer surface is a synthetic, it's a, a nylon uh, mix. And then the insulation in this is Primaloft. Primaloft is the warmest insulation for weight. It's, it's number one. Primalop Gold Echo is the, the top grade of uh, Primaloft. 
and it's used by top manufacturers in their gear. So this is very, very light, very thin, but you'd be amazed how warm it is. Sometimes I wear it on, over these layers I was describing. I will wear the vest and then the jacket over, or if it's coming and going cold and then warming up and so on, I'll put the jacket on. So let's go to the jacket. Okay, this is an amazing jacket. This is a Patagonia Nano Puff model. It is extremely light, weighs almost nothing. It is very thin, but again, very warm for what it is. This is Primalof, once again, insulation. Beautiful hood, it fits snugly around your face, and it'll actually stuff into its own pocket if you want to do that. I never do it, but it has an inside pocket where you can stuff it in. And I can't say enough good things about this jacket. I wear it all temperature ranges from, you know, maybe 10, 12, 15 degrees right on down to minus 20. And I just layer over it or under it as necessary, and it just takes care of all temperature ranges. So if, if I'm going to, you know, be getting warm and I know it, I'll put the jacket on over my base layers like I have now. And then I put the vest on top of the jacket. Many people think a vest has to go under. It's not true. You know, a vest works very well on top, you know, so you zip it up and you've got a double layer here, but then it warms up, let's say, or you're climbing. Don't forget in the mountains, you're gonna be going up a lot. And when you're going up, you get hot, right? So rather than having it under and you wanna take the vest off because it's too much, you gotta take your jacket off, then take the vest off, then put your jacket back on. I use it on top a lot. Then I can just take it off, and now I've got the right layers on for the conditions. And then it gets cold again, I just slip it back on top. Also, if it's windy and cold, you don't want to be taking things off and you get cold. So you just put it on and off on the top. Very, very uh, good trick to know. It's simple stuff, but if you don't know it, you don't know it. Now I have another jacket here. You know, conditions are always changing. You don't know what's gonna occur. This one is very breathable. It happens to be from the company Rab, which is a British company. It's stretchy, it's very comfortable, it's very light for how big it is, and it's waterproof. So it breathes, so when you're going up and working, producing a lot of perspiration and moisture, it lets that out, it breathes, so to speak. It's called air permeability. Mm -hmm. But it's also windproof and it's also waterproof. So if necessary, I have this with me, I can put it over top of this jacket, this jacket, whatever I got on, I can use it standalone over base layers, whatever you need to do. You got, a, again, a very good hood, adjustable hood, very uh, roomy pockets if you need that. So these things are light. I mean, all this together weighs very little and does an amazing job. It covers so many areas of moisture and temperature and, and so on. So just some information there about the clothes. So that's what we're going to... Oh, and, and one other point is... The hats. Hats are important. You know, it says you lose, I forget what it is, 70% of your heat goes out your head if you don't have a good head covering. So keeping your head covered because of warmth retention and also to protect it from sun and wind, etc. I have a variety here. If it's cold in the mornings, I'm starting out, I put this on, very light, breathes really well. If it's a little windy and the air is going through the fleece, I pull my hood up. That blocks the air going through. See? Gets a little warmer, I can undo this. Gets even warmer, I can put this up. So I got a lot of different, you know, adjustments here just to keep my head in a comfortable temperature range and protected. 
I use this early mornings. We do a lot of early morning starts in the dark when you're climbing and so on, and the sun is not out, I'd use this. So that's one thing. When the sun comes out, it gets a little bright. I like to have a, a beak to protect my eyes. So I have this, it also has ear flaps. I can pull it down. See, it's also very, very breathable. This is from a company in England known as Paramo. If it's very cold, and the sun is bright and or it's raining or whatever say your snow this bill protects your face from rain and snow and wind and so on i may double up like i say layering is is a wonderful thing put on that put this on top and now i'm the wind is then i can put a hood on that so with these items i can go from you know plus 15 to minus 20 you know, and, and it's easy, small stuff. Have it in your backpack, and you're not going to go wrong. In summer and so on, when I know it's not going to be cold, I might just take my ball cap. You know, that's, uh, that's an obvious thing. Or if it's a very sunny day, and, you know, this mountain sun, especially when it's reflecting off of snow, and you get that a lot in spring when it's really warm, but there's still snow, if you get a lot of reflection, then I put on this hat because this protects my ears and my back of my neck and face from intense sun rays. So <clears throat> head covering is also very important. You say, well, gosh, you've got so much stuff. But actually, you know, it's not so much. And these are not expensive. Some of them are a little more expensive than others. But these are just basic things. And one important point, that's it for the clothes at the moment. Oh, we'll go to that on another side. Is never, and I'm emphasizing the word never, use anything that's made from cotton. Is the, the saying among mountaineers, cotton kills. Cotton easily gets wet. It absorbs all moisture, whether it's from your body or from rain or snow or whatever. It gets wet. And then it's really, really sucking the heat out of your body. You know, people have died from hypothermia simply because they had on cotton clothes. They got too cold. They couldn't warm up and they died. You know, never. It's, cotton is also heavy. It's, it's just very, very unsuitable. It's good around town. Good in the summer. It's cool you know, and so on. But for the, the mountains, we are change, the weather's changing, winds come up, all kind of conditions are variable. No cotton, see. And that includes socks. Throw away your cotton socks as far as using them in the mountains. Get some either merino wool socks, which is my favorite, or they make some very good synthetics too. If you go to a good sporting goods store, they can direct you to good hiking socks and nothing cotton. That is a very good thing to know. Okay, so that's the idea on this segment of what to take in the mountains. So dress properly, have the right gear, and your experience will be a lot better. Light, cool, wicking, warm. You can go light and fast, as they say. You're not lugging around big stuff. And if you gotta take off something, these, these little Premalov things, you can stuff them in a backpack. You don't even know they're in there. You just stick them in. You know, you're not burdened down with some big jacket you gotta haul around all day, either on your body or in your backpack, either one. It's just too heavy, too bulky, just a burden. Hmm? Okay. We'll be back with another one talking about the hardware we got here and our shoes, what we, and our backpack. That's on the next Happy Man Gear Show.